Hi my dear doctors, today uh, I am sharing two clinical questions with you. So the first one is a 53 year old woman complains of progressive weight loss, nervousness and swearing. The physical examination reveals tachycardia and exophthalmos. Her thyroid is diffused in lost in warm and palpation. Serum levels of thyroid stimulating hormone are low and level of thyroid hormone T3 and T4 are markedly elevated. Which of the following mechanism of the disease best explain the pathogenesis of this patient's thyroid condition? So I will go through the answers later. First, uh, I will see what is this condition called. So many of you easily, uh, I think, make a diagnosis there by seeing the picture only because uh, here is a lady with exophthalmos. So there is a bilateral exophthalmos. There is a protrusion of eyes. Okay. It seems like a, a condition, uh, a lady here first because uh, grave disease maybe because uh, grave disease is more common in the ladies and uh, exophthalmosis or a sign of uh, grave disease. So how I choose uh, the answer as a grave disease. So I will show you something because you know what in this condition grave disease what happened uh, there is increase in the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies so the thyroid stimulating hormone uh, receptor antibodies they are usually present of the thyroid gland okay on the thyroid gland what it do the receptors are here for example these antibodies come and attach with the receptor and here cause the production of thyroid hormone so in serum we can see t3 and t4 level high high level of t3 and t4 so once in the blood there is high level of t3 and t4 it go to the pituitary and inhibit the release of thyroid stability hormone so if someone asks that here in degree the level of thyroid stability hormone is low then why there is production of t3 and t4 how is it possible so in this condition in grave disease there is the type of hyperthyroidism the main stimulus is not from the pituitary it is not a thyroid stimulating hormone rather it is a thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibody this is causing the release and that there is nothing to stop this hormone this uh, receptor sorry this antibody the t3 and t4 level is not going to inhibit the production of the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies rather it inhibit the thyroid stimulating hormone so we can say that in this condition what's happening that the thyroid stimulating hormone is aggressively producing and it is not inhibiting and there is no uh, such thing uh, that causes the inhibition except uh, some drugs we can give immune suppressors and like that okay so uh, what uh, will be the sign and symptoms uh, causes by hyper production or excessive production of the thyroid hormones so as we know that the thyroid hormone they are responsible for the conversion of mass into energy so in a patient with hyperthyroidism increase in the production of the thyroid hormone the mass of the body will decrease as we can see here the weight loss okay one sign one sign Number second, there will be increase in energy, so the person will be hyperactive. And what about the other signs? There will be some uh, central nervous system sign. There will be some cardiovascular system signs. Okay. So what are the central nervous system? There will be anxiety. We can say there will be nervousness, dizziness. Okay. So here nervousness is given in this exam. It's nervousness. So it is a sign of central nervous system causes of the hyperthyroidism. So what will be the uh, central uh, CVS system signs? So the CVS system sign, there will be tachycardia, their metabolism is high, so they need more blood. So definitely the heart will pump more and more in order to fulfill the demand of the tissues. So the uh, there is an increase uh, in activity of the heart, so heart itself, okay? So there will be tachycardia, palpitation, and some condition we can say there will be supraventricular tachycardia or uh, uh, sinus uh, tachycardia in this uh, condition. That is what we call is the thyrotoxicosis. So these are the signs related to the CVS system and the cardiovascular CVS system and the CNS system. 
so in uh, in this condition uh, one more thing that we can see uh, there are some GIT symptoms okay and GIT symptoms including there will be uh, diarrhea is uh, one of the GIT sim uh, symptom that is the hyper due to hypermobility of the bio bowel movement okay and there will be some sympathetic uh, our stimulation the sympathetic our stimulation due to the uh, our expression or increase in the expression of the beta receptors so once beta receptors will high the sympathetic system uh, will activate more so the sympathetic system increase the signs they are being uh, in, in this condition there will be dry skin okay there will be some sweating okay so we can see here that the sweating is here so it is also sign so three signs up till we know that there is a weight loss nervousness and sweating so these are the sign of the hyperthyroidism so what other signs okay that tachycardia is also the exophthalmos is the ophthalmic sign of the grave disease and if uh, if, if, if if it is difficult for you to uh, make a diagnosis on the uh, on the basis of these clinical manifestations then libertical manifestation medical uh, libertical sign libertical um, diagnosis investigation is also given here that there is increase decrease in thyroid stimulated hormone due to negative feedback as i early said okay and there is decrease in level of thyroid stimulatory hormone and increase in the level of t3 and t4 it is also uh, giving pointing it is also pointing toward the uh, grave disease or hyperthyroidism so what they want to ask in this image which of the following mechanism of disease is best explain the pathogenesis of these thyroid patients thyroid condition so let's see that what they want to um, what they want to ask okay so number first they ask about antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity cytopathic antibodies delayed type hypersensitivity immediate hypersensitivity and immune complex hypersensitivity as i said early that this is not a loss of function it is a gain of function there is no inflammation there is no uh, cellular damage uh, so it is um, not a type of hypersensitivity reaction neither it is uh, a delayed type nor a immediate type so there is no such uh inflammatory process so it there is there is not immediate type it is not delayed type hypersensitivity and it is not type of immune complex disease because in this condition what happened um, that uh, we can see inflammation we can see loss of function one of the cardinal sign of the inflammatory process is that there is will be loss of function so here there is no loss of function so what it is not a cellular uh, hypersensitive direction or uh, cellular necrosis okay so there is no cytotoxicity so uh, tox cytotoxicity so the answer will be the gain of function and it is a disorder of the autoantibodies so we can see that it is a cytopathic antibodies problem so we solve this question so let's move through the next question so here you can see that it is a type of the histopathology and i love the histopathology okay so what the other question is saying an 80 year old woman with a history of hypertension is rushed to the emergency room complaining of the chest pain of one hour duration physical examination disclosed bilateral pitting like edema uh, hepatosplenomegaly and rails at the base of the both lungs the patient is uh, apprehensive and sweating the patient loses consciousness and die of the cardiac arrhythmia microscopic examination of the lung at this at autopsy is shown which of the following hemodynamic uh, processes best explain these uh, pathological finding so uh, if um, the image is not given if this histopathology uh, autopsy is not here then it will be a little bit difficult for you to understand that what will be the causes but some of the point here we can see uh, there uh, they're pointing toward that uh, there is problem with the heart okay the heart is not functioning well so wh why the heart is not functioning well um, because the signs we can here see here that is there is a hepatosplenomegaly we can see there is a bilateral pitting like edema and uh, there is apprehensive okay and sweating we can see there is a cardiac arrhythmia already is it okay so this patient is suffering from some sort of congestive heart failure so once the heart fails okay for example this is your heart and uh, this is your left ventricle right ventricle uh, left atrium and the right atrium so what happening here for example in the con congestive heart failure the ventricle is not working so blood pool here exert backward pressure 
this pressure built up the pressure in the lungs so what happened in the lung vasculature the blood cannot drain properly into the atrium so blood will start to pool here so what happened here due to the pooling of the blood increase hydrostatic pressure once the hydrostatic pressure increases the blood will leak out from the capillaries and enter into the alveolar space and enter into the interstitium and this cause diffuse this causes decrease in the diffusion or of gases there is a problem into the problem in um, gaseous exchange so there will be dyspnea the patient cannot free, feel um, uh, um, that he is well or the patient will be cyanotic and um, even death can cause okay and it is all uh, it is a type you can see there will be pulmonary edema formation into the uh, lungs so what happened the patient is suffering from congestive heart failure that uh, exert a pressure on the lungs and there will be a uh, venous uh, blood uh, congestion into the uh, lungs and this congestion leads to increase in hydrostatic pressure and this hydrostatic pressure causes the blood to come out from the vessels and pool into the um, alveolar spaces okay so that causing problem so uh, once there will be um, uh, increase in the hydrostatic static pressure into the lungs definitely uh, the blood will exert a back pressure even from the lungs the pressure will uh, causes and uh, the dilation okay or the failure of the even right ventricle and then it pressure exert into the uh, right atrium and then this right atrium what they do it cannot drain this blood into the right ventricle because it's failing it's not working so the failing ventricle is now not working properly let me make a, an image that i will explain you that how we can see here uh, there is a splenomegaly there is hepatomegaly okay so i said that this is your heart this is your lungs i'm sorry you can making like not anatomically correct so here the congestive heart failure exert pressure in the lungs there will be lungs or pulmonary edema and it also exert pressure into the ventricle there will be uh, again uh, right ventricle failure exert pressure here and this pressure now causes the congestion of the blood venous blood into the liver there will be hepatomegaly and it causes portal hypertension in this portal hypertension what it do it causes ascites it may causes the spleen to be enlarged spon splenomegaly so we can see that in case of congestive heart failure not only pulmonary edema here there will be hepatomegaly splenomegaly even ascites and there will be due to venous condition that we can see like edema as well as you can see here they said that there will be like edema okay now this case is clear that it is a case of congestive heart failure due to that there will be a blood uh, congestion into the lung so now let's see the autopsy result that what is here so in autopsy in this autopsy result we can easily see a, a beautiful uh, demonstration okay these normally the uh, these are the alveolar spaces normally the alveolar spaces they are filled with only air okay they appear white but here it is a uh, pinkish it means that here a fluid accumulate that is the edema so all this pinkish pinkish substance it is a pulmonary or alveolar fluid due to venous congestion or we can say that due to the increase in hydrostatic pressure into the vessels even we can see here that the vessels between the uh, two alveoli we can see all these red red they are the blood vessels containing rbc's they are engorged you can see here this particular blood vessel it is dilated it becomes increasing size due to increased hydrostatic pressure in some of the alveoli in this alveoli we can see here not only the fluid we can see the rbc's even coming to the alveoli 
here we can see the uh, uh, rbc is the blood vessel the blood cells so if the condition is so severe it uh, causes the increase in permeability of the blood vessels pulmonary vessels so not only leak the blood vessel the bl the fluid out from the vessel also the rbcs they come out of the vessel and enter into the alveolar space so he, here we can see okay so let's see the answers so what they want to ask us decrease capillary permeability so they are asking that why there is a pulmonary edema okay why the patient die decrease pulmonary per, uh, capillary permeability no it's increase permeability permeability decrease intravascular oncotic pressure no there is no relation to oncotic pressure because oncotic pressure normally can see in case uh, of the liver failure uh, liver failure when the albumin level decreases okay or renal failure when albumin level go out of the body and increase intravascular hydrostatic pressure yeah it might be maybe it may be the cause i said it it is the cause one of the causes is that an increase in intravascular oncotic pressure oncotic pressure has nothing to do here because there is no liver uh, failure or kidney problem vessel construction of the precapillary atrials no it is not so it is a very really very easy uh, question and the simple answer is that that there is increase in intravascular hydrostatic pressure so now uh, we completed two of the questions thank you so much